Hey YouTube, it's Erin and I am the Handbag Housewife and I'm back again with another video. Today's video is going to be about buying and selling and trading and when to know when to let go. I have a fair amount of experience in this particular area and I thought I would share with you some of the wisdom that I am learning along the way. But first I want to show you my bag of the day. On her maiden voyage, this is my Gucci Marmont in the color, I believe it is emerald green. I got this bag from Vestier Collective. It was my last successful purchase with them. They have not canceled my account again since the whole snafu with the Fendi Mini Mama baguette, but I do not plan on buying from them anymore. However, I am delighted to have this bag in my collection. You may recall that when I got it, she was all smashed, and other than that, she looked pretty good. And so I did want to show you that I was able to essentially restructure her and get her in virtually new shape. I mean, there's still just a tiny bit of, I guess, warbling or warping on the sides, but she looks pretty darn good. And I accomplished that with an M Boutique Australia base shaper and a joy and bag bag organizer. I have her loaded up for the day. I use the pockets in the joy and bag insert or organizer so that I can organize extra gift cards and cards without using another card holder. But you can see I've got a fair amount of stuff in there. I do use the pocket on the opposite side from those two pockets to keep cash and checks and that sort of thing. So that is the first of, I believe, 16 bags that I'm going to show you and talk to you about today. I'm gonna try to go through pretty quickly, but you're gonna get a lot of eye candy and a lot of reasoning as to why I have what I have after all of the buying and selling that I do. Most of the bags I sell are contemporary brands like Tory Burch, Coach, and Marc Jacobs, and Longshop. Longshop kind of straddles the fence as to whether it is contemporary or luxury, but because of the prices of the bags that I have bought, I would consider them more of a contemporary brand versus a luxury brand. The first bag I want to show you is my gorgeous Speedy B25. Now, at one time, I did have the trifecta in both this particular style and in the pochette accessoire, and I ended up selling all of those except for the Damier Aben ones. And honestly, it had to do with the fear of the Vaquetta, and I ended up buying bags in this print and in the monogram print with black leather trim. So I love the bag. I love the shape of the bag. I love the squishy gushiness of the bag. I like that I can dress it up, but the Vaquetta just drove me a bit crazy. Now I did make an exception for Vaquetta in, in the monogram multi-pochette accessoire. I have that, but it just has the little tab in the front on both of the pouches. And so it's really minimum what could get water spots or damage to it. And of course, I recently just purchased this little cutie. And the reason for that is because I have acquired several Louis Vuitton straps to use with my monogram multi-pochette. I just wanted to have one more bag with the light vaquetta that I could use all of those bandolier straps that I have purchased. And I like the Speedy 20 because it's more my size bag. It holds a lot despite its small size. And I do also appreciate that it doesn't have the strip of vaquetta down the sides like the bandolier 25s and 30s have. It's just a little bit less to worry about. So I guess this is sort of an exception to my rule, but that's how I decided to keep one of those three bags. And when I say three bags, I'm talking about the bigger Speedy 25. Next, let's move on to some tote bags. So I recently sold a whole slew of tote bags, including Field Totes and Marc Jacobs Mini the Tote Bags. And I may have made a mistake in selling as many as I did. I do not feel that way about the field tote. I don't know why, but I am happy with just having this one. I feel like this one is a work of art. It is the up woven field tote and 
it is just stunning. They use recycled bits of leather to make this. I have an insert in it that's actually designed, I think, for an Alma BB, but it works really well. I do not carry this bag much. I've only carried it, I think, once, but I just love the look of it. I think the reason why I kind of fell out of love with the Field Tote 22s, as well as the Tyler Tote, is just kind of how they were built as totes. I think I prefer more east-west totes versus north-south. And at first I thought it was just a whole tote bag issue that I just really wasn't into totes. But I don't think that's true because I took this one for a test drive and ended up carrying it for almost a week. I fell back in love with the Marc Jacobs the tote bag mini. And I never thought I would do that. I kept one. I sold my Orchid Haze and I sold my Argan Oil but I kept this one and I also sold or I traded my rose dust and out of all of the field totes and all of the Marc Jacobs the tote bags that I have sold the, the only one I regret is the rose dust and I just miss it I mean it's such a beautiful shimmery pink and when I started using this bag again I forgot how good it feels just to put it on your arm like this when you're running in somewhere quickly and how great it is crossbody and how easy it is to get into the inside of the bag. And this bag has a green tag insert in it that I really enjoy using with it. And she's decked out with a next fashion chain as an accessory. <sighs> So in this case, I made a mistake selling all of them, but what I tend to do when I find something I like is I buy a whole bunch of them, and you can look at my collection videos and see that. I buy too many, to be honest. I just get in a frenzy and I buy, 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 buy. And I do that even with luxury bags, although generally I don't buy more than three of one particular style in a luxury bag because they're just so darn expensive. But I have purchased, you know, four of these and gosh, I can't remember how many field totes I had, probably six. I get out of control and then I start a selling cycle when I move into my next collecting phase. And when I do the selling, if it's something I really like, like this one or this one, I'll keep one or two or sometimes even three of them and then just sell the rest. And I use that to fund my next passion. I am lucky having a channel like I do because selling the contemporary bags that I purchase is relatively easy. I generally always get a good deal on them, which I pass on to my viewers and my subscribers. And I think there's a sense of trust between you and I. You know that I'm not going to screw you over and send you a stinky, nasty bag. I barely use my bags. I really enjoy having them and I'm trying to rotate through them, but I'm a collector and so I don't expect to use every one of them. The last I counted, I had around 75 bags and I've used all but 10. So I'm doing pretty good and most of those 10 are new within the last few months. So in the grand scheme of things, I am using them all. It just takes me a bit to get through them and I tend to use what's newer generally. And if I don't use that newer thing, either it is a pinnacle bag that I just hold in such high regard that it's for special occasion only, or I maybe shouldn't have bought the thing in the first place. Let's move on and talk about the Louis Vuitton Alma BB. This bag is absolutely stunning. I think Epi Leather is extremely nice. This color in particular can really show a lot of wear around the base edges. So I baby this bag, but I love the look of it. I love the feel of the Epi leather. And I recently traded my Indigo version of this bag as part of a trade with Amy Michelle Luxury for the new Capucines BB in the Galay color that I now own. And I don't regret that decision at all. Basically, I find with the Alma BB that while I can fit everything in it and it looks stunning, that it's just a little hard. And I like to wear my bags crossbody. And it's just a little bit of a stiff bag that's not the most comfortable to bounce around on your hip. So it's better if you hand carry it. 
I sometimes will also shoulder carry it with a chunky chain that I got from Amazon, but it's not one of the bags I reach for first. So having three of them in my collection just didn't make sense. That said, the reason why I branched into the Epi Alma BBs is because I kind of grew out of the Louis Vuitton canvas for a while, and I just decided that I wanted leather. And when I figured out that with leather, you can get Epi for just not that much more than a canvas piece, I decided to give it a try, and of course, I bought two. This one I got off Fester Collective for steel. I mean, I think it was less than $1,300. The other that I traded with Amy, I got directly from Louis Vuitton and paid closer to $1,800 for that one. I have an insane amount of bags to show you today, but let's just keep going. So I had collected multiples of the tally bag, and this is the only one I have left. I like this bag. I like the look of it. I like the functionality of it. I mean, it holds... A great deal. I have a green tag insert in there. And again, I'll link their website and my discount code below. They make inserts for several coach bags. And in fact, I sold green tag inserts one of my tallies, the red orange one. I also at one time had papaya and black. And I think that's it. I just had the four. I kept the chalk because chalk is one of my favorite colors with Coach, and I love both the straps that came with this bag, and I love to use them with other chalk bags in my collection, including my Studio bag and my Cassie 19 and my Soft Pebble camera bag. So I'm keeping this one mainly for the straps. I would say if it weren't for the straps that I just love both of them, I would probably sell this bag, but because I want to keep both of the straps, this color is the one I chose to keep. Now, with regards to the black one that I let go and the papaya one that I let go, I found good strap substitutes for those bags for the other bags that I have in my collection where I like to mix and match. So that's kind of my rationale behind this one. I enjoy carrying these probably about a year ago, and I just haven't reached for them lately. But the one thing I would give you in terms of advice is if you're thinking of selling, you need to go out and wear these bags because if you don't wear them before you sell them, you may regret it. And that's what happened to me with a couple of the bags in my collection that I've sold and then wanted to go back and repurchase. I have to tell you, I do not regret any of the Cassie 19s I have in my collection. I have sold several of these bags, but I don't anticipate ever being without any. I have four currently. It's a style that works fabulously for me. I tend to go for the solid colors with one exception, and I would recommend them hands down. I just don't need 10. Much like with the other bags that I've had larger collections of, I found that by having less, I use them more. The next bag I want to talk about is the Gucci Marmot shoulder bag in the small size. This is also called the Gucci Marmot camera bag by laymen like us purse lovers, but on their website, they don't call it a camera bag. It definitely is the shape of a camera bag. And I have had four of these in my collection, not all at the same time. I've had the porcelain rose, which I now have the flap style in, and I've had the red, it's called hibiscus red, and then I've also got the brown with the diagonal quilting. And for me, the red one, I just wished I would have got it in the flap style. For some reason, certain colors just go with certain bag styles. And for me, the red in this style didn't work as well as the red in the flap style. And that said, when I ended up trading the red one as part of the trade with Amy Michelle Luxury for the Capucines BB, I ended up replacing it with a completely different style. I didn't go for the flap style of the Gucci Marmont. I went with something new and fresh, and now I have two of this style in my collection. Two or three is a really good number to have of any one particular style. And I like having the gray with the silver and the brown with the gold in this style. I really don't know what it is in my mind where certain colors with certain styles work better, but sometimes that's what happens. I just find a color makes the bag. And that's what happened with this one versus the flap style. I much preferred the camera style in this one. 
who knows why it makes sense. I'm also weird in the fact that I like to collect certain numbers of bags. I wouldn't ever want to have seven of one bag. I'd want to have six. I like multiples of five. I like multiples of three. I'm weird. I have to admit it, but I'm also a crazy purse lover, and so that's weird in and of itself. Next, let's talk about the Longchamp Extra Small Le Pliage Top Handle Tote. I absolutely love these little bags. When I started my channel, I was a crazy collector of these, and I got over 20 of them, and I love them all, and I use them, and there were a couple I didn't use, but I used most all of them, and now I have five and I love every one of the five that I have, and three of them have black in them, and they go with so many of my straps from see-through purses. I just don't see that I will part with any of the five that I have left, and that's as far as I can curate this collection, at least at this point. These little bags hold so much. They are very comfortable when you're wearing them with they're straps sometimes, but primarily with the thicker web straps. And the mock croc in particular is extremely durable. I love the Matisse leather as well because it's so soft and squishy. And of course, gosh, I have the puffy lambskin one. It's the softest bag in my collection. So I pared this down and I'm telling you by limiting the amount of bags I have in this particular style, I am wearing what I have more. It's like a breath of fresh air when I come in and see the five that I've whittled down from the 20 or 25. It gives me such pleasure to reach for one of these now. I'm appreciating them way more than when I had so much. I think trying to choose between that many of this style gave me more anxiety than it was worth and I ended up not wearing any of them. And so that's one thing I found as I'm curating my collection is that when I whittle it down to what I consider my top one, two, three, or five, I am wearing the bags that are left and I'm remembering why I fell in love with the styles to begin with. Speaking of whittling, a bunch of you may have been completely shocked that I sold two of my Marley 20 bags, the Beechwood and the Saddle Multi ones. And the reason I did that is because I wasn't reaching for them. This is becoming a common statement on this particular video, but it's true. I wasn't reaching for them and I wasn't reaching for this beauty either. But just like with the others that I've talked about, as soon as I sold those two, I started wearing this one and remembering how much I loved it. And do I miss the other two? I really don't. I have bags in those colors, in the light beigey cream colors, and I have a brand new Fendi in that caramely brown color, and I have my Lulu Puffer in that caramely brown color. So I am good on those colors, but this one, this is just exquisite and special, and I felt true joy bringing her out. And by selling the other two, it made me reach for this one to remember why I loved them so much to begin with. This was my first unboxing on my channel, and when I opened it, it gave me such joy, and I still feel the same way today. I've done a recent video on my Papaya Soft Pebble camera bag. This is one of only a few examples where I have bought a bag back. I bought the Porcelain Rose Gucci Marmot camera bag back and then ended up selling it a second time. But I don't foresee that happening with this little cutie. I have several straps to snazz her up with. I love the weight of this bag, the squishiness of this bag. And out of the three colors I have, I would say that this color gives me the most joy. I parted with her because I bought the Louis Vuitton Pont 9 in a very similar color of summer gold. And when I started wearing that bag, I found it to be heavy because it's lined in leather. It is stunning. I do not plan to sell it. It is a very special bag in my collection, and it's on its way back to me from repairs as we speak, so I cannot wait to start wearing her again. But when I wear that bag, 
I am going to be selective about where I wear it. And I have all these clothes that match it so well. And I figured I would like to have one more bag in that color that I can wear without worrying about it. So that when I go to a festival or I go to an amusement park, I can wear those clothes and have the same effect without worrying about my bag. I'm still gonna wear the Pont 9, I still love it. I do not plan to sell it, but that's why I bought this bag back and I do not regret it at all and she is here to stay. The Coach Studio bag, I still love. It's leather lined, it's luxurious, it's a little heavy, just like the Louis Vuitton Pont 9 is, but it's worth it for what you get. I've had this chain on it and I would tell you, Probably don't drape a chain across the top of this bag because I did notice a little dent in it after doing that. I mean, it was just on display this way. So I'm gonna take this off when I put her back on the shelf. But I did have two of these and I whittled it down to one. And the reason is because I have a gray soft tabby that I mentioned earlier and I felt like it fulfilled my gray and gold in my collection at least for now i anticipate at some point i'm going to get a gray and gold luxury handbag and there are several different styles i might consider like perhaps a fendi baguette or perhaps a lady dior i don't know but for now that gives me something to look forward to and i wasn't wearing the gray and gold studio bag anyway, and it didn't go with a ton of my straps like this one does. I have three bags left at my feet. If you've stuck with me this long, please go down into the comments and leave me a four leaf clover, just so I know that I still have somebody with me. The next bag I wanna talk about is the Coach Pillow Madison. I had collected several of these and I did sell a few of them. I sold my furry one, my shirling one, and I sold my two that had the dark copper hardware on them. And the reasoning behind that is with Coach, I just prefer brass and it's that simple. I sold the green one that had the dark copper hardware and I have a Saint Laurent in a very similar color in the collage style. And I also sold the chambray blue one, and I have other blue bags that I would reach for before that one, just because I was worried about the hardware. The bags that I have kept in this style are the coral and the wine, and they both have the beautiful brass hardware, and I love them. And so these are the two that got curated down to, and the reasoning is the hardware and I do prefer leather over shirling. I've tried shirling a few times. I thought I was in love with it at Christmas and it just turned out that I prefer the leather more. I've sold a couple different shirling or furry bags and I think I've learned my lesson at this point. That's just not a particular material that works for me. Next, I want to talk to you about the soft tabby. I love these bags and I collected these as well. And I have sold my vanilla one and I have sold my taupe one and I've sold my candy pink one. And now I have three. I've got ivory, denim, and dove gray. And I love all three. I'm wearing them. I have worn this one and the dove gray recently. I have straps galore that match this particular bag. So for me, it's a better fit than the taupe. And I have a beautiful Saint Laurent Lulu in the taupe color. It's actually called Dark Beige. And I have a camera bag by Saint Laurent in the Dusty Gray, which is similar to the taupe color. And I think if I looked around my closet right now, I could find a couple more bags that are taupe with gold hardware. So I have whittled my collection of the Soft Tabby down to the ones that I think I will use the most, and all of a sudden, I am using them, and I am getting joy out of them. And I have to tell you that in a lot of cases recently, when I have sold a particular style, it is because I'm getting a luxury version. I've discovered on Rebag and other sites like Fashion File, and then somewhat unsuccessfully on Vestiaire, and then eBay, and then Poshmark, that I can get some of these luxury bags for not much more than these contemporary bags. Now, the Soft Tabby for me is a true exception because I could buy a Mama Baguette in a very similar size and shape, 
but I prefer the Coach Soft Tabby to the Mama Baguettes. I like how the hardware clips on. I like how you can interchange the straps. The Mama Baguettes have like a buckle here that you put the strap through. And if you did watch my Fendi Mini Mama Baguette video from my Vestier Collective unboxing fail, you would know that the glazing on the sides of that particular bit that ran through the buckle it was actually kind of crumbling off. And so now every time I see a mama baguette, I worry that that will happen. And so for me, I love the leather coach soft tabby more than the mama baguette. And I think I'm probably going to stick with the newer style baguettes if I ever get one. I have the chain version in the light pink with black, and it is just stunning. Haven't used that one, but God, it's so pretty. I just don't foresee myself going vintage in this case because I think contemporary is beating the vintage luxury style hands down. So last but not least is one of my Tory Burch Kira bags. This is the small convertible shoulder bag. And these bags, I feel like the two that I have are extremely well made. I have this one and then I have the woven one that is in the Arctic blue shade. Both of these have a lot of structure. They feel substantial. They feel luxurious. And the ones I sold were the lambskin ones with the chevron crisscross. I had several. I think I had five or six of those, and I sold them all. None of mine were damaged. They were all fine. But I just felt like they weren't as structured and luxurious and special as the two that I kept. So once again, whittling down my collection, buying different things. I love my Lulu bags by St. Laurent, and I got the same feeling out of the Chevron bags by Tory Burch, but they just weren't as nice. Now, these styles, the two that I've kept, are as nice as the St. Laurent bags. So in all of this, I hope you're getting that sometimes the contemporary brands are every bit as nice or better than their luxury counterparts, and sometimes collecting can get out of hand and whittling things down can give you just a breather and make you realize what you have and appreciate it. I use all of my bags, at least at some point, and if I don't use them, then I'm probably going to sell them because I don't want to just have them sitting on the shelf unless I consider them a work of art. And I have a few of those. We've talked about those before. But I have been interchangeably using a luxury and contemporary bags, and my eyes have been opened in the past few months as to what you can really get in terms of luxury handbags if you shop the pre-love market. And you have to be willing to go over some bumps in the road because everything doesn't always work out buying pre-owned bags. But if you're willing to do that, you can get some amazing deals and not spend all that much more than you would on a Tory Burch bag or a Coach bag. So if it's something that you would love to have but think you can't, don't think that. I mean, you can sell two or three Tory Burch or Coach bags and get a Saint Laurent bag or get a Gucci bag or get a Louis Vuitton bag. And sometimes you don't even have to sell that many to get those things that you might think were unreachable. And that's basically what I've been doing. And I've been curating my collection and I've gotten from over 125 bags down to around 75. And when I walk in my closet now, the feeling I get is totally different than when I had that many. It was just too much. And what I have now is pretty darn special. Most of the time with the luxury bags that I buy, I think long and hard about it and they work out. That's not always the case. And you're going to see a little bit of that here in the near future because I did trade in my pink Roman stud bag and I sold my blue Roman stud bag back to fashion file. And with those two trades and sales, I have two bags coming, a pink and a blue. So I'm basically, again, curating my collection, but this one is a little different because I'm trading the luxury for the luxury because I found out things about those bags when I got them in my possession that I didn't know. And like we discussed yesterday, the blue one, it was, it, the handle gives it dents no matter where you put it. It just always is going to end up with dents along the top edge of the bag. 
That drives me crazy. I wish they would have fixed the top handle on the Roman small stud top handle bag. And then the other one, it was just a color issue. So I've tweaked what I have and I can't wait to show you what's coming because I think you're going to really like it. So if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Do it and ring the notification bell so that you are notified of future exciting content such as this. Also, go find me on Instagram. The name there is the same. It's the at symbol, then the handbag housewife, all lowercase. You can DM me there or you can email me at the handbag housewife at gmail.com. If I don't hear from you, I will see you again real soon. Take care and have a fabulous day. Bye.